Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is Anders Rodin, and I'm very pleased to be here at the invitation of Dr. Chandramani Arial and your MPROSC uh, organization um, for World Turtle Day uh, to be celebrated here in Nepal and around the world. Uh, a couple of words about myself. Um, uh, I'm not a turtle conservationist uh, to begin with. I am a, a physician, an orthopedic surgeon. I was born in Sweden, moved to the U.S. when I was very young, um, went to medical school, became a, um, a doctor, now retired. Um, but along the way, I developed a love for turtles. Uh, got very interested in turtle taxonomy back in the 1970s uh, and described uh, some new species from New Guinea and Indonesia, South America, etc., and then gradually became very interested in conservation. Um, uh, I loved turtles and I loved their diversity. And I, when I realized that they were um, in terrible trouble and uh, um, uh, facing uh, uh, possible extinction, I decided I needed to help make a difference. Um, and uh, I, I believe I, I've been able to do that to a certain extent. And I wanted to share some of that with all, all of you uh, today. Um, thank you for inviting me. Um, Nepal was one, always one of my favorite places. I visited your beautiful country back in 1992 and took a trek through the, um, um, the uh, Himalayan foothills and spent a lot of time in the Terai uh, at uh, Chitwan and Bardia National Parks and was able to do some turtle studies along the way um, that I then published. And we'll talk about that later. Let me now go and start uh, sharing the screen uh, for my presentation. So I hope you can all see this. Uh, I wanna talk about uh, turtles uh, being in terrible trouble and how we make a, a difference uh, um, uh, globally. Um, and so my first question is why should we care about turtles? Uh, to my mind, uh, turtles are beautiful and charismatic. Uh, they are surprisingly diverse and colorful like this Batagur Kachuga from the Ganges River. Um, beautifully decorated shells like this radiated tortoise from Madagascar. Survivors from the age of dinosaurs. And some are unique living fossils like this New Guinea pignose turtle. And others are really strange, like my favorite Caledinas from the Australian region. So uh, when we look at global species richness uh, for all turtles, uh, this is a map that we produced in our 2021 publication checklist. At that time, there were 357 species known. Uh, and the red and uh, yellow colors indicate areas of high species uh, um, uh, richness. And as you can see, uh, the southeastern United States and the Amazon basin uh, are two of the most uh, uh, diverse uh, uh, turtle-rich areas in the world, and the Ganges Brahmaputra uh, Basin in uh, India and Nepal, Bangladesh, um, uh, also one of the top three areas of the world for diversity of turtles and tortoises. If we focus in on Asia, um, you can see this more clearly how the uh, Terai region of uh, Nepal uh, and the Ganges Brahmaputra basins uh, uh, have very high uh, species richness, uh, also uh, some increased richness down in the Malaysian Peninsula. If we look at uh, just Nepal, uh, your country has 17 species of turtles and tortoises recorded there, uh, and which ranks at number 18 among the world's nations in terms of turtle and tortoise richness. Not bad. Uh, the U.S. is number one, uh, as the U.S. Uh, often tries to be. Uh, Mexico is number two. Uh, for if you count uh, just species, then Brazil is a number three ranked nation in the world. But if you include subspecies as different taxa, then India, in fact, comes in as number three in the world. So my experience in Nepal started back in 1992. I was um, um, on a essentially a tourist trip uh, to Nepal. Uh, I went to Chitwan and Bardia, and uh, we rode around on elephants like you often did back in those days. I'm not sure that's still allowed. Uh, but uh, um, uh, we found um, uh, turtles in both uh, national parks, and I managed to get a study out of it and published it in 1996. So let's talk about the fact that turtles are in terrible trouble. Uh, many are 
uh, nearly extinct. Um, yet, despite that, we have only lost one species uh, in the last 50 years of conservation efforts. So in my mind, at least, there is still hope. Uh, if we look at some of the most endangered turtles in the world, uh, here's Pseudomedura umbrina, the western swamp turtle of Australia, down to about uh, two, three hundred individuals in a tiny area uh, where they're being uh, heavily threatened by uh, uh, climate change. Uh, and uh, they're starting to do some uh, assisted uh, migration uh, work to help save that species. Uh, the plowshare tortoise from Madagascar, uh, probably the world's most expensive tortoise in the sense that the illegal poaching has reduced the wild population to less than 100 animals. Uh, and it commands prices in the tens of thousands of dollars on the black market. Many of them are in captivity in China, but very few breeding uh, captive uh, uh, colonies. And so this species is really on the brink. Uh, then there's Cyclonorbis elegans, this large uh, um, Nubian uh, softshell, uh, which was thought to be extinct until rediscovered in South Sudan uh, just a few years ago by uh, Italian and South Sudanese uh, uh, biologists. Uh, and concerted efforts are now underway to save the few remaining populations of this very large um, uh, softshell uh, turtle. And then there's Chelidina macordi, one of my favorites, because I described it back in the early 1990s. Uh, this uh, species from the tiny island of Roti in Indonesia is now extinct in the wild, uh, no longer occurs on that island, except that its uh, ca captive breeding colonies are now beginning to be able to uh, uh, repatriate some of these animals back to Roti, and hopefully they will be successfully restored there. And then there's uh, Raphidus svenhoei, the Red River giant softshell turtle. This animal, very large, uh, was down to about five animals a few years ago. Uh, hope um, um, was raised when uh, this animal was found in a lake not too far outside Vietnam, outside, excuse me, outside Hanoi, uh, but unfortunately, just a couple of months ago, this animal died of natural causes. Uh, and we're now down to only two or three known animals, although there is hope uh, that the ongoing surveys uh, will find uh, new evidence of, of uh, um, individuals still um, uh, alive. Uh, we've seen some photographs of animals that, that look like uh, raffidus. Um, so there's still hope for this species. And then there's the Fernandina giant tortoise. Um, only two animals of this species have ever been found. The first one was found in 1903, and ever since then, no others were found, and the species was thought to be extinct until about two, three years ago when this female, the first female ever found of the species, uh, was uh, found and genetically confirmed to be only the second known specimen of this um, fantastic uh, species. So there's hope here, if we can find some more animals. Um, Fernandina, of course, is a very difficult island uh, to do any work on. It's uh, uh, highly volcanic and uh, very difficult to, um, uh, to access. And then there is the one species that has gone extinct. This is back in 1982 when I had an opportunity to um, spend some time with Lonesome George uh, in uh, the Galapagos. Uh, many attempts were made to mate this uh, uh, tortoise, but uh, uh, ultimately unsuccessful. And his species died out in 2012. But there are hybrids out there um, that uh, uh, we may be able to genetically um, uh, restore uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this species. Once again, a hope rises eternally. So uh, what's the main problem behind uh, uh, turtle um, uh, threats and extinctions? Obviously, the loss of habitat is huge um, and development uh, also a problem. But uh, the overriding uh, problem that we had over years is the so-called Asian turtle trade, which started uh, back in the 1980s and 1990s. And uh, back at the end of 1999, uh, we held a, a seminal workshop in Cambodia um, that uh, um, for the first time brought together specialists from all over Southeast Asia um, um, that evaluated what was going on with the commercial trade of uh, turtles uh, from all of Southeast Asia destined for the Chinese markets. <clears throat> and we published this uh, uh, monograph in, uh, 2000, in the year 2000, which became sort of a roadmap for what we needed to do to to help save turtles. And what we discovered at that time was 
uh, that that uh, turtles and tortoises were being massively marketed and, and massively collected, uh, poached from all over um, uh, Southeast Asia. It was a holding pen in Sumatra uh, for uh, Malaysian box turtles um, and uh, um, uh, other large tortoises uh, uh, warehoused uh, uh, in Indonesia, uh, destined to be sent to uh, Chinese uh, markets. Um, uh, giant warehouses full of boxes of uh, live turtles uh, being ready to be shipped out uh, from Indonesia to um, uh, China. And this was going on in, in most of the Southeast Asian countries, including India, and uh, possibly to a lesser extent, even from Nepal back in those days. Uh, and, uh, and not only were live turtles being exported, but also um, uh, body parts, uh, uh, shells, uh, which were then uh, uh, ground down and turned into a traditional Chinese medicines, uh, which was also a huge part of the trade and frankly still is. So the question then becomes how badly endangered are turtles and tortoises and how do they compare with other groups of endangered vertebrates? We always say that turtles and tortoises are among the most endangered animals on earth, but is this correct? And most importantly, what have we done about it? So we put together uh, um, something called the Turtle Conservation Coalition many years ago, and uh, we put out uh, these two publications on the top 25 most endangered turtles and tortoises. Uh, and both of these uh, publications, the first in 2011 and the second in 2018, have been vitally important in, in helping to generate support for and raising funds for uh, turtle conservation efforts. We also uh, published uh, uh, in 2018 uh, a global conservation status of all turtles and tortoises, where we did demonstrate uh, that turtles and tortoises are uh, among the most endangered of all vertebrate uh, groups. And I had the privilege of leading that uh, assessment. Uh, and, and there we showed uh, that if we look at average threat level for turtles per geographic region, um, we can see on the left side of the graph there in North America, Australasia, et cetera, uh, they have an average threat level of approximately two, and that corresponds to um, approximately a near threatened to maybe a vulnerable status. But if we look at Asia, um, um, their uh, average threat level is about uh, level four, which is uh, um, uh, endangered. Uh, Nepal, um, if we look at just the 17 species that occur in Nepal, uh, the average threat level there comes out of 3.5 which makes Nepal slightly better than the average Asian nation, which is good news, I guess. And if then look also at um, the percent of threatened and endangered uh, um, species per large vertebrate group, uh, we see that primates are in fact the most endangered uh, threatened group of, of uh, um, uh, vertebrates, but turtles and tortoises are number two just ahead of salamanders and then uh, ahead of crocodiles, frogs, mammals, lizards, and birds. So here at this time, then, we ask, how can people like us make a difference? And in my view, frankly, people make all the difference, especially by committed individuals from engaged <coughs> and focused organizations. And also getting out into the field is important, such as here at Bali Bay National Park in Madagascar in 2008, uh, where I was fortunate to find Aster Keeley's and Nifera the plowshare tortoise in the wild. Uh, or here in Bardia National Park, Nepal, back in 1992, when I found burnt melon Achilles trijuga in a burnt field and wrote my article about Nepalese turtles as a result. So how have all of us addressed the global threats to turtles? And what organizations have risen to the challenge? How have we documented the turtle survival crisis? And what have we done to help protect and save turtles? Uh, it all starts with the International Union for the Conservation of Nature and its Species Survival Commission, the IUCN SSC. And back in 1981, um, there was no specialist group focused on turtles and tortoises other than sea turtles. Um, so Russ Mittermeier, my good friend and uh, uh, college uh, uh, classmate, um, in 1981, um, suggested to the IUCN that they create a tortoise and freshwater turtle specialist group, which in fact they did. Uh, and as a result, uh, we've uh, had a series of 
uh, chairs of that group uh, um, uh, over the last uh, uh, approximately 40 years. Uh, and uh, um, I was uh, honored to be its chair uh, for about eight years from uh, 2004 to 2012. And then Craig Stanford is the current chair, and he spoke to you on World Turtle Day two years ago. So we continue to find tradition here. Um, what the specialist group primarily does is to do the, the red list assessments uh, uh, for determining the conservation status of species around the world. We also do action planning and catalyzing conservation efforts. Um, we, in addition, we publish uh, uh, monograph accounts on the conservation biology of, of, of all species of freshwater turtles and tortoises. Uh, this is an ongoing project. We started in 2008. We're still going strong. We've produced about 120 different accounts um, and uh, uh, covering about 163 turtle and tortoise taxa, uh, including some of the ones that occur in Nepal. And then also back in 1992, right after my trip to Nepal, I created uh, the Shalonen Research Foundation to be a vehicle for um, my work on turtles and to um, uh, to essentially focus on uh, the scientific basis of uh, uh, turtle diversity and to what we can do to uh, work on conservation efforts. And this is still going strong. Uh, we uh, initiated the publication Chelonian Conservation Biology back in 1993. It's a peer-reviewed publication. Uh, um, several um, people from Nepal and Bhutan and India have uh, published in it uh, over the years. Uh, yeah, we also produced Chelonian research monographs. Uh, which we, we started with the uh, Asian turtle trade and done other volumes on Madagascar, uh, et cetera. Uh, and uh, our most recent one is the Turtles of the World Checklist and Atlas, uh, the ninth edition, um, uh, which uh, um, I urge all of you to uh, obtain a copy of. It's available free online to be downloaded. You do not need to pay for this. Uh, we also focus a little bit on, on the passion that moves all of us uh, and uh, uh, I enjoy poetry, and I enjoy poetry about turtles and tortoises, and we've recently published uh, uh, this book about uh, turtle uh, poetry. And the other organization that's critically important out there is the Turtle Survival Alliance, uh, based in South Carolina in the U.S. Uh, this was started as a task force of our specialist group back in 2001, and has since become an independent uh, um, uh, organization, uh, spearheaded by Rick Hudson, um, uh, and this organization has become uh, increasingly important uh, worldwide. Uh, they have many programs in many countries. Um, for example, in Myanmar, the, uh, the restored uh, populations of the Burmese roof turtle, <coughs> uh, this beautiful uh, species that was on the verge of extinction. Uh, and then in South Carolina, they're also breeding uh, more than 25 different species of endangered turtles and tortoises uh, with a, a large uh, uh, captive uh, breeding uh, uh, collection there. Uh, they also uh, co-host the uh, annual uh, symposium um, um, put on by the TSA and the specialist group, um, uh, which is a critically important uh, symposium for bringing together uh, people from all over the world to share um, uh, research results and networking uh, and, uh, uh, frankly, getting to know each other uh, and talking about successes and failures and uh, helping to um, uh, forge a path forward for turtle conservation and uh, biology. Uh, the next organization that's important in all of this is the Turtle Conservancy, uh, founded back in 2005 by Eric Good, and I'm honored to chair uh, the board for the uh, Turtle Conservancy. And Eric Good is an interesting individual. Uh, he made a fortune uh, uh, running nightclubs and uh, owning hotels and restaurants, uh, but his uh, 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 true love all along had been uh, turtles and tortoises, uh, and he then chose to uh, create an organization that could um, in some way uh, save the, the animals that he loved from extinction. And the approach the Turtle Conservancy has taken uh, is to buy land with turtles and tortoises on it that are endangered. And our first purchase was uh, uh, for a large tract of land in uh, South Africa, uh, that housed uh, um, uh, a large population of geometric tortoises, uh, only about a thousand animals, uh, but that was essentially about 90% of the world's remaining population of this critically endangered species. Uh, and we bought uh, 400 hectares and we're still adding to that land. 
in order to protect uh, this uh, um, the one remaining pocket uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, tortoises of that uh, species. And then in Mexico, uh, more recently, uh, we've focused our attention on the Bolson tortoise, another critically endangered uh, tortoise, the largest that occurs in, um, in North America, uh, the Bolson tortoise. And there we have purchased 25,500 hectares uh, of uh, um, uh, tortoise habitat, uh, which uh, um, protects approximately uh, 10 to 20 percent of the world's uh, remaining uh, population. Beautiful landscape um, yeah, uh, that I absolutely love. Uh, we also have a, a captive breeding center in Southern California, uh, where we uh, breed approximately 36 uh, species of endangered turtles and tortoises, um, uh, about uh, just under a thousand uh, animals there as well. And then the other uh, organization that's beginning to make a major difference in Africa is the African Shalonian Institute, run by my good friend Thomas Jung, uh, started in 2009 in Senegal. Uh, and uh, uh, he has graciously named his conservation breeding center after me, which I, uh, that was uh, unexpected, but very nice. Uh, and he's also recently started an African scholarship program to train uh, native African uh, uh, conservationists in, in uh, the needs of uh, um, uh, turtles and tortoises and how best to help uh, uh, protect them. And then back in 2002, we also created the Turtle Conservation Fund. Uh, and this was a, a consortium uh, of all the different uh, turtle conservation organizations and some of the larger organizations uh, that were only partially focused on turtles and tortoises uh, to put together a fund uh, to provide uh, small grants uh, to conservationists out there uh, working on the front lines of uh, turtle conservation around the world. Um, and we had a lot of partners and uh, we continue uh, to do this on an annual basis. Um, uh, here's a uh, photograph of a Zoom meeting we had recently uh, where we discuss uh, um, proposals that are sent to us uh, and uh, make decisions regarding funding. Um, uh, back in 2002, we issued an action plan to, to uh, focus on what our strategy would be for um, uh, funding and uh, um, uh, actions to follow. Uh, and then in uh, 2018, we published a summary activity report. These are available um, um, uh, for your interest. Uh, and just contact me and uh, I will send you uh, uh, copies. They're available as PDFs online, no charge. So we've been very successful. Uh, uh, over the last uh, uh, 20 years, we have uh, funded uh, 342 grants at an average uh, uh, of about uh, 567,000 rupees. Uh, uh, per grant, uh, <clears throat> dispersing uh, almost 200 million uh, uh, Nepalese rupees uh, um, uh, over that uh, uh, time frame, of which we are quite proud. Uh, we have funded uh, um, projects uh, all over the world, a lot of them in uh, uh, Southeast Asia, including the Ganges Brahmaputra area, uh, also West Africa and, uh, uh, and the uh, um, tropical Americas. Uh, the next organization that's important is the Mohammed bin Zayed Species Conservation Fund. This was founded back in 2009 by the Crown Prince uh, of uh, Abu Dhabi and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, I am fortunate uh, to sit on its advisory board. Uh, and we provide uh, um, um, support for all um, endangered uh, species of, of all groups. Uh, I focus on turtles and tortoises. Uh, but we also fund work on uh, birds, mammals, uh, uh, invertebrates, plants, fungi, etc. Uh, and for the turtle grants, uh, we've given out uh, nearly uh, uh, over 200 uh, uh, million rupees uh, uh, over the last uh, uh, 14 years or so. Uh, 157 grants with an average of 1.3 million rupees per grant, so doing quite well. Now here's our board um, uh, meeting in Abu Dhabi a few years ago um, um, and headed by um, uh, Razan Al Mubarak, uh, uh, the lady down in the lower left, uh, who is uh, um, uh, the manager of the fund and also currently the president of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Uh, so, bringing all these organizations uh, together to work together is very <coughs> important. And then there's the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, which uh, just last year initiated. Uh, 
uh, freshwater uh, turtle and tortoises uh, uh, grant program. Uh, and during the first year, um, uh, they awarded uh, 119 million dollars in rupees to 15 grants, uh, which is an auspicious beginning. And hopefully, they will be able to continue this on an annual basis. Um, we had tried very hard back in 2006 uh, to get this amendment passed. We met with uh, um, uh, Senator Jeffords, uh, uh, one of the main movers in the U.S. Senate uh, for the Marine Turtle Conservation Act, uh, but it took us. Uh, um another uh what uh, um 18 years uh, no um 16 years took us another 16 years uh before we finally accomplished this uh, uh last year but um, um continuing efforts to make these things happen is important we got to have the patience of a turtle in order sometimes to uh, to achieve uh, success so what are the take home messages here and how do we successfully accomplish these global conservation goals for turtles and tortoises. And I think I've learned some lessons over the years. Uh, what's important here is to catalyze a broad-based um, international turtle conservation coalition. And frankly, it started with the specialist group back in the 1980s. Uh, it led to these other organizations, uh, Chelonian Research in 92, uh, TSA in 2001, the Con Conservation Fund in 2002, Turtle Conservancy in 2005. And then we took those uh, uh, initial five turtle focused organizations and created an increasingly global uh, uh, partnership network uh, with all sorts of other organizations uh, of uh, equal or, or, or even more um, impactful importance, including the IUCN SSC, um, Conservation International and Rewild, <coughs> the Mohammed bin Zayed. Uh, the Species Conservation Fund, CITES, Nordens Ark in Sweden, Fondation Segre in uh, uh, Switzerland, IAZA in Europe, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, African Chelonian Institute, and now your organization, NPROSC, that hopefully um, we will be able to continue working with in some fashion. And so what I see here is that concert, concerted conservation action creates hope for the future, and that's what we need to do. Our vision and mission for turtle conservation needs to be to restore global turtle and tortoise populations, such as these primeval giant tortoises in the mist photographed on top of Volcan Alcedo in the Galapagos many years ago. So what we need, we need to succeed by combining, first of all, IUCN Red List status assessments, and then with science-based action planning and implementation, and we need to focus on protecting and restoring habitats and populations with captive breeding as needed. And then we need to promote this by publishing, educating, and advocating. And we need to facilitate it by fundraising and strategic partnering, and then leveraging it all by working together for the same common goals. We need to frankly pursue our passion for species protection. And we need to promote other people's passion for species protection. And we need to provide that passionate personal leadership for species protection. People don't protect things unless they care about them. And we need to facilitate that feeling of caring. I think we have a moral responsibility, frankly, uh, to protect the biodiversity and nature that's out there. And I think we all feel the same way about that. And in fact, I think most people feel that way. Uh, I had the privilege to know Harrison Ford uh, when I was working with Conservation International. Um, and uh, I caught him one day off guard and I gave him a copy of the Turtles in Trouble book. And uh, I said to him, gee, you know, I know that you don't like snakes um, based on your movies, but what about turtles? And he said, well, I like turtles, both the cute ones and the ugly ones. <laughs> um, now, I don't think any turtles are ugly, but I can see his point. Um, and the point here is that most people do like turtles, uh, but turtles are in terrible trouble. And we need to do whatever we can to help protect and save them for the future, for our children and our children's children and beyond. Anyway. 
that's my talk. And thank you very much for listening. Um, and let me just say that I hope that your organization and you as individuals will take some of these messages to heart uh, and focus more on the turtles in your own backyard, Nepalese turtles, um, and um, do more of the, the ground research that needs to be done. Find out where they are, what, what their distribution patterns, the threats where they do or did occur, and then most importantly, what can you do to protect them from the threats that they face um, the Terai is a wonderful, beautiful region with unparalleled diversity, uh, from rhinos to uh, crocodiles to turtles. Um, protect it. Um, make it the kind of a place where the world wants to come see and experience the incredible beauty that's around you and the diversity that's around you. Um, and hopefully by focusing on turtles, um, we can make some of these... Uh, uh, visions of uh, visions of restored biodiversity come true. Thank you very much for listening. I hope to meet some of you at some point. I hope to return to Nepal at some point in the future. Thank you so much. <laughs>